My Fertility Path, brought to you by the Fertility Awareness Advocate Initiative. Hi, everyone. My name is Ansi Gradum, and the show is My Fertility Path, brought to you by the Fertility Awareness Advocate Initiative. This is the only show where we share real stories about infertility, the struggles, the treatment available, and the joy that comes there and after. Today on My Fertility Path, we will be looking at the role age plays in fertility. My first guest had her child at the age of 57. She'll be sharing her story when we return. Infertility treatment and fertility success rate are highly dependent on ovarian age. The older a woman gets, the lower the chances of achieving pregnancy with her own eggs. I am joined in the studio by Mrs. Folashade Akiode, a retired director of pharmacy who got pregnant for the first time after 18 years of marriage and became a mother of triplets at 57. You're very welcome. So I married for 18 years, no issue. I got to menopause. I was still, as Christian, I said, unless I got to the age of um, um, Sarah, before I give up running about for children, I met Dr. Bayomi, and then I, I was told that I can still, there is hope. So I started treatment, and then at the end of the day, I did it only once. You did IVF the only once? Only once, and it was successful. You are very lucky. Because I know that a lot of women, some try five times, six times, and it never quite gets there. So how did it feel waiting for 18 years? <laughs> a lot of thinking, sleepless nights, and all the rest. It, what helped me was I was still working and I was doing extra work to keep my to keep myself busy. But I was, you know, as a woman. <laughs> as a woman, it can be very difficult because people are asking you yes, questions. Yes. Everyone is saying. Sometimes they say to you, oh, "We are waiting for you." Mm -hmm. So yeah. how did that feel mentally? Did you ah. feel? <laughs> did it drive you nuts? Did it, it drive let, you crazy? Let me show you. Let me place a short one. Somebody, my neighbor. Just told me one day, I was having a visitor that uh, she wants to, uh, she wanted to see me. And I said, come in, because the visitor is not, I didn't know if she wanted to say something like that. She said, ah, my husband said, I've wasted my, my husband and I, we have wasted our youth. Ah, I said, for this, I was not myself. As I consoled myself, I didn't waste my youth. So, something like that. We come across something like that. I'm very sorry to hear that because sometimes people need to understand that you don't say things like that to people. I was surprised that the woman could say it because we are friends. I didn't know why. Maybe. But at the end of the day, when I gave birth to my children, she begged me, begged, and I forgave her. Did you feel like giving up? Did you feel like it was? I never. Part? I know. I told you that I said when I get to 90 years. That's when Just you will that stop. We stop running around. So because my case is above Bible there. But even if I go to menopause, I was still looking into Bible play. Sarah was 90. Yes, she was 90. Uh, so mm -hmm. that when I get to 90 years, I will give up. Did you at any point in time think that? Were you waiting? Okay, because people say I'm waiting on the Lord. So you were praying. Yes. Did you feel that you had 
tested your faith enough before you went to the doctors? Or did you because think... Because I know that if God does not put that, it will not work. It will not... Even uh, they commended my faith when I got there. Well, because every hour, no, I will say, even if it's only 1% success rate, I will be 1%. I used to say that. that. That is some faith right there. So how old are your triplets now? They are going to be 10 in, on the 12th of April. So I want to ask a question. There's been arguments that if older parents make the best parents, and some people argue that it's unfair, to the children. What's your take on that? I used to tell God, well, because you give me these children late, I will I will live, I will live long. Because you are the one who made me to have them late. I want to see them wait, give children, give back to children before I go to Jesus. Can I ask a question? I know this is very weird and I need to ask this question because it's in my head. Yeah. Did you breastfeed? Uh-uh. For almost, it was when I won, I had the promotion exam. Two weeks to that second birthday, I stopped breastfeeding them. So you went full? Yes. Two years. Because I used to pity them. Hey, what's a child supposed to take? <laughs> <laughs> they are sharing it. <laughs> so I said, I will feed them to two years. But when I had promotion, I had to reach. So I wasn't having enough time. So I said, please forgive me. I will stop. We had two weeks to your second birthday. <laughs> to read what you so the promotion is that. My last question to you for this segment would be, would be, how did your partner support you? It was just a guy that supported me. My partner ran away. <laughs> he didn't support me. That's when the doctor Ajay gave me encouragement. So I thank God for his life. The partners need to know that we're in this together. It's not one person who has to bear the brunt. So thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Mrs. Akiode. When we come, we'll be joined by our resident doctor, Dr. Bayomi Ajayi. Please stay with us. Welcome back to the show. You're watching My Fertility Path. Before the break, you heard the story of Mrs. Akiode, who became a mother after 18 years of waiting. She had a triplets at the age of 57. Joining us in the studio now is Dr. Bayomi Ajayi, a resident doctor and the CEO of Nautica Fertility Center. He'll be talking to us about age factor in infertility. Welcome, doctor. Thank you very much, Jose. It's good to have you again. Always my pleasure. So, you heard her story. Mm -hmm. What did you isolate as the issues she struggled with? Well, um, let's say age was the main thing, actually. Um, maybe because I'm involved, I know so much about the story, more, probably more than what she told. Oh, so really? I understand. Please yeah, tell so, me everything. Ah, uh, it's going to be difficult. It's going to take your whole show, so don't let me, <laughs> don't let me start. <laughs> okay. But, but the interesting thing is that, okay, I think uh, for the first time, I think I met them at, she was 53 when I first met her. And uh, she had a baby at 57, really, really one cycle. That's one thing about her that I really... Uh, that interested me about her. She was tenacious. She was. She went through it a lot before doing the cycle. It's good for her to say she did do a cycle. One thing she didn't tell you was that she did three stereoscopies. That is to look inside the uterus, and then there were because she's had a, she had had a previous surgery, which had left scars in the uterus, and we kept clearing the scars oh. until we were happy that we could so do, she had scar tissues yeah, that can be until, so until we were happy that she could do this treatment and then she did this treatment once and succeeded so it's it's really a story of perseverance and i give it to her she she's a, a very wonderful woman so you have said that age was a factor yep. does this apply to both male and female yes it does 
Um, and that's one of the misconceptions. People think, yeah, because we're always talking about age and fertility in women, they don't know that men also, you know, there was a terminology called andropos at a point in time, which is not very common because... Uh, like menopause. Like menopause. But because uh, it might just be a misnomer because uh, unlike menopause where the, it really stops, there is just a decline in men. So at, from about age 45, men start having a decline in their ability to reproduce. It takes longer for them to get their wives pregnant, but not never, you know, and that's the difference. It takes but longer it for them to... doesn't necessarily mean that they cannot perform they, the act. No. They, no, no, no. You know, we in that, one of the programs, we had said that it's the difference between doing the act and getting a woman pregnant. So there's always, you must always differentiate between the two. I, you know, I just need to constantly buttress that fact. So that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you, know. so you can continue to do that and then it might not happen. Because as you grow older as a man, hmm. something happens in your sperm. Okay, the, 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 what happens, what the man contributes to reproduction is, is DNA. Yes. Right? And that DNA is in the sperm head. It's like in an envelope in the sperm head. Yes. As you grow older, the, this, this envelope or this DNA fragments. And so we say the men, older men, have higher DNA fragmentation index. And therefore, it takes them longer for them to be able to achieve conception. I mean, to make their wives pregnant, even when the wives are young. So it, uh, the fact that you, are, you go and marry a 20-something-year-old and you are 55 does not really take away the, the, all the hassles. And also, the chances of chromosomal abnormalities is higher as you grow older as a man. So as you've said, chromo um, chromosomal um, abnormalities, that would mean um, when you bear children that are... Yeah, they could have what, Down syndrome. Down syndrome. So, we know what Down syndrome is. They could be Mongols, you know. So the intelligence might be reduced. They, so they, it's not it's not without danger when you are reproducing above fifty. It's as not a without, man. As a man, even. So as is a man. it safer for a much older woman to find a much younger man then? Well, <laughs> Sorry, I just they, had they to know that the, the, you know the case of the older woman is even more grave. Let me try to choose my words. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because she probably will stop reproducing completely. She runs out of eggs and there is no, no, no other thing that can be done except to use donor eggs. So okay. even if she's sleeping with a 22-year-old man, it does not matter. Age is a factor and the, the reason why this happens is because as a woman, a woman comes into the world with all the eggs she's going to use in her lifetime. Unlike women that we continue to, so we say now, women are like uh, uh, warehouses where men are like factories. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so you come into the world with all the eggs that you're going to use and you start, uh, they start going away month, every month after puberty. So your best years of reproduction, and when you're not even looking for children, when you're going to in your teenage, when you're sorting out your... You are trying to sort out your life. life. Yeah, that's, those are your best years. And that's one of the things that we always say, that you should plan life and know when exactly. you want to start a family. That's too much pressure. But then what age should a woman start worrying about her age then? Seriously, um, from about 30, you need to start looking at planning. But 35 is a critical age in a woman when it comes to fertility. 45? 35. Oh, I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> because by the time you're 40, you're, you're just, you said so. At yes, 37, it takes a major dip. Yes. At 40, it takes, it's like um, a miracle, oh. seriously. Okay. Because your chances of having a miscarriage or an abortion at 40 is higher than the chances that you have a live birth. Been there, done that. You're still watching My Fertility Path. We're just getting to it. There's so much more to talk about. So much more. What treatment options are available? So please stay with us.
welcome back to the show. The question is, do people believe that age plays a role in infertility? Let's hear what they have to say. In some cases, I have seen that age plays, you know, a major role in infertility, so I would say yes. Um, yes, I think um, age does play a major role in infertility. I mean, if you see an average 40-year-old or 50-year-old looking woman now, you can argue that she's 30. She's the only one that knows what's going on inside her. Her womb is her own. And since she sees that a lot of things are happening now in society, I bet that more women are taking care of their reproductive health now than they were in our mother's age. So really, Age has nothing to do with this. Age is just a number. In the same way I have seen age affect people when it comes to childbearing, I've also seen people who are older give birth, even in their old age, you know, um, be it by natural means or they had to um, seek other means like, you know, IVF and all that. So um, I don't think there is really an age. The younger you are, the ability to get pregnant is a lot easier than when you get older because your hormones at some point gets um, begins to wind down you know so oh sure your age plays a large role as studies have shown the older we get you know the lower chances we have of um, reproduction so typical and not so shocking. So back to you, doctor. I'm going to take some questions from social media. I picked them up and someone has asked here. She says, can a diabetic patient of 50 years have a baby through IVF? Well, the answer is yes. The only thing that is probably an addition is the diabetes because uh, Mrs. Akiode was 57 when she had her own baby. So the only thing is, but if diabetes is well controlled, then it's possible for such a woman to have a baby. Okay. And there's another question here that says, at what age should a couple begin to seek treatment for infertility? Infertility. Well, yeah, the, what the World Health Organization says is that if you are less than 35, you can wait for one year. That is the woman, she's less than 35 in the union. They can wait for one year before seeking treatment. Well, if the woman is over 35 years old, they should try for six months and they should start looking out for treatment. Because of what we've been saying of this age thing in women, you know, especially in women, that uh, fertility declines rapidly after the age of 35 and takes a major hit at 37. So between 35 and 37, there is the need to start sorting yourself out before the, it becomes more and more and more difficult for even IVF to work. Okay, can I ask this a question that's in my head? I always have these questions that just come through. Mm. Um, before I go back to the other question here, this mm -hmm. is from me. Yeah. So at what age would you advise, or do you even advise it, that um, if women should um, freeze their eggs? Actually, that's where I was coming to now that the, I thought we were talk, I'm not going to talk about that under treatment. Yeah, actually somebody says it's a gift that a father should give to a daughter at 30 if she's not married. Oh yes. And, um, and you know there's so many companies now in, in some parts of the world that are giving it to their to members of their staff. Facebook is doing that, Google is doing that, trying to help people when you hit the age of over 30 that you should start thinking of freezing your eggs if Mr. Wright is not available anywhere around you. So uh, it's because the chances of success or the number of eggs, the quality of the eggs is better at that age than when you start freezing at 37. Okay. Okay, there's another question here that says, the person says, okay, the deed is done. I'm already in my late 40s or even 50s. What are my options of having kids? She's very non-committal, so she's we don't know whether she's 40 or she's 50. Anyway, what from what we've been saying, I mean, if you are over 40, uh, one thing we need to clarify is that even at 40, Yes. Natural conception can happen. All right? Cannot. Can happen. Okay. Even at 40. All right? The chances are just less. Like I said, the chances that you probably have a miscarriage or 
have uh, an abortion is higher when you're over 40 than the chances that you have a life back. But that does not mean that even a 40-year-old woman cannot have natural conception. It's when she's now tried for six months and there is nothing happening, that's when she needs to see the doctor. Can I say something else? Sure, sure, when sure. When you say try for six months, mm -hmm. now, how often do One, the couple need to try? Wonderful. You need to have intercourse at least two to three times in a week for you to say that you have tried. If you, and without any form of contraception. So you are not using condoms. Two to not, three times a In a week. week. Yeah. That's giving them a timetable. No, they, they're free to, to do sort more. Of, of course, they can do it every day if they so desire. Why not? Okay. Yeah. But we, what we try to say that every other day in the sense that if the man is like the spam can't is borderline, it gives him enough, just some to, time for him to put things together. To, you know what I mean? Put, so, <laughs> doctor. <laughs> <laughs> to come back, you know, uh, informed uh, uh, before he... Uh, uh, before he starts, uh, so that every day, he's not doing it every day. So that's the whole idea. Okay, so I'll, I'll just ask the last question. Mm. She says, can a menopausal woman conceive through IVF? Sure, she can. Uh, one of the things that we... If you're 57, you're likely to be menopausal. So it's... it's you, some women still go through menstruation at that age. Ah, well, in, I, I know a few. Well, they must be the outliers, you know. Generally, in this environment, menopause is around 50, 51. Okay. So, 57, majority of the people have reached menopause. So, the answer is why, yes. Yeah, that's so interesting. So, but uh, I'm still, I still have another question, though. Yeah, how. Will this be possible? How is it possible? Exactly. That's, because it you just stop make, making eggs. You, you have no eggs. You have, I mean, this, I don't want to go into it. But Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what Mary asked the angel. How can this be? This is not Mary here. This isn't <laughs> asking. <laughs> How can this be? <laughs> the, the answer is simple. Uh, we, we know that it's possible. Or what you need, you need eggs in this sperm. Okay. You know? This X can come from another person, all right? right. The, 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 yeah, so a younger person can donate X for an older person and then she can have, and then we use the sperm of the, uh, the male partner in the union. If it's the husband or is a partner, we use the male. The, uh, and if she doesn't even have any male partner, it's possible to use donor sperm as well. So we can use that and then she can carry the, the baby or baby is once she's healthy. So what we just need to be sure of is that the woman is healthy. And you see, this technology can actually be applied even to a 70 year old woman. But there are so many ethical issues surrounding that. I, I, I worry yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are so many ethical issues surrounding that. And that's why some clinics will say, okay, we, we also, even some countries will say, no, you can't treat a woman above this age yes. you know so yeah. yeah in europe they have that yeah, a lot yeah yeah thank you all so much for watching thank you so much and i do hope that you've learned so much as i have today about age and fertility or age and infertility as it should be but you must remember that infertility should never ever define you see and talk to someone today my name is Unsi Burton. keep sharing keep educating and i'll see you next time my Fertility Path, brought to you by the Fertility Awareness Advocate Initiative.